In the northwestern United States is Missoula, Montana. This small university town has the most successful right livelihood business to be established in America by the FWBO. But when Buddha Palato moved to Missoula in 1995, he had no immediate intention of opening a restaurant called Tipu's Tiger. There were a number of different factors that made me realize the need for a business in Missoula. One of them was, well, just personal, really. I mean, I needed to have some sort of livelihood myself. Also, it became clear that those students who had gradually got involved in the center didn't have anything to move into, so they were leaving Missoula. There are a number of different reasons why a restaurant was sort of appealing. Firstly, I thought it would actually work as a business, and that was quite important. I was going to be borrowing money to do it, and I wanted it to work. I wanted to have a business that had interaction with the public, you know, that we actually provided some sort of service in Missoula, which had a, um, well, another dimension to it, a sort of, if you like, even an altruistic dimension to it. Um, you know, we were creating a situation in which people could eat vegetarian, um, healthy food, reasonable prices. It was in fact two years ago in February that we moved into the building that is now the restaurant. So there were all sorts of difficulties to start with. Firstly, having no experience, uh, we needed to find out how possible it was to set up uh, a restaurant in Missoula. There's al there, at the time, there was already a vegetarian restaurant in town. And for a small town like Missoula, uh, it did cross my mind whether we were doing the right, you know, whether we were actually doing the right thing. Then there was all the building work that was done, and you know, with my previous experience in doing construction work, we did most of the work ourselves. I'm very, very pleased with how that worked out because. You know, one of the things I wanted to make sure was the restaurant was a place which was aesthetically very pleasing and a place where people wanted to be. Probably one of the most difficult things initially about the restaurant is working out the recipes to cook for hundreds of people. In a way, it was unclear how many people were going to come through the door. And within the first few days, we you know, we, we learned that we were going to be far more successful than we initially thought. When we first opened, there were only a few of us who were serious about setting up a right life with business. In the course of the first year, we employed several people who were not even involved in Buddhism. They, they weren't even Buddhists, and uh, uh, that was a necessary move, and I think we needed to. And so slowly we were able to replace some of those people with people who moved from other parts of the States to work at the restaurant. And that actually made a big difference to the restaurant. You know, it became more of what we wanted. Right now we have nine people who work full-time in the restaurant and four people who are part-time. And of the nine people, eight of them are either mitras or order members. So it's a very different situation now, and a very uh, positive, uh, cooperative, harmonious team. And one of the things that's unusual about the team is that it's a mixed team. We have both men and women working in the team. And it's worked out very well. I mean, I think it would be useful to uh, move more towards having, uh, you know, a men's team and a women's team. But at the moment, it seems premature to do that. And uh, you know that everybody seems to get on well and uh, seem to everybody seems to get something out of it. At the beginning, I had very few people who were really committed to the restaurant as a project, and I found that the more I gave of myself the more I had to kind of relinquish my smaller self. And then I felt that I could be much larger. So the, it was like the more I gave, the more I was, the larger I became, um, rather than giving away myself, because it was something that I really believed in. And that's made 
all the difference to me is being able to work in a project that I really believe in and see it grow and see it be successful. Really, the work at Tipu's is not restaurant work. It may look like it, uh, but the work really, what we're doing is building Sangha. That's what I feel my work is doing, is helping to build Sangha. I found that um, <clears throat> in being around people who are, who are also um, going for refuge, that my going for refuge has, has sort of been in, inspired in, in various ways. In Missoula, uh, people know that we are a, a Buddhist restaurant. They might not understand Buddhist ethics. They might not know what right livelihood is about. I think they understand the ethics side that we're trying to practice ahimsa, you know, non, non-violence or non-harm. I think in America we're going to have to experiment with how we set up our businesses. The economic situation is quite different here to Britain and I think we need to be quite open to different approaches. It's created a situation where people can work together, you know, instead of people going off working in different situations individually, we have a place where people are actually together much more, which is actually, I think, speeded up the process of spiritual friendship. You know, it speeded up the process of cooperation, of working together, of creating a certain sort of depth of harmony. It's also been why we've managed to create uh, a men's community in Missoula and possibly a women's community. You know, it's been the sort of foundation for different sort of benefits within the Sangha. Not so much for Missoula, but for the movement in the States, it's sort of shown that it's possible to set up a right livelihood business in America. In us setting up Tipu's, we've actually broken through a certain barrier you know, that was there before. And I'm hoping that people, uh, order members, mitras in America will be you know, looking to what we're doing in Missoula and seeing the benefits and hopefully doing something in their local areas uh, you know, to set about creating a right livelihood business.